All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is the 5th of February, and let's talk about a few caution signs. To be very clear, I'm not advocating to get short the market. I am not advocating to stop getting long the market. If anything, I'm advocating to think in terms of probabilities. Think in terms of probabilities, and probabilities-wise, I think we're closer to the end of the move than we are to the beginning of the move. So a few different things here. And none of these things on their own suggest you want to get short. You want to get short on an actionable signal. But one thing I'm seeing here is the dollar, the almighty buckaroo. Back here in November, when that breaks down, the S&Ps, the QQQ, the, uh, the equities market takes off and rallies to the upside. Very quietly, in a very sneaky fashion, the dollar is shaping up pretty nicely here. Big three scores, 8 out of 10. Momentum is back above zero. The daily squeeze fired long. We've got buy signals on the daily down to the 30 minute. The dollar shaping up does not mean the market has to pull back. Just something to keep an eye on. The bigger issue here is extended. Everything is mucho extendo. So on your weekly charts... That dotted green line, that's measuring three average true range moves above your weekly 21 EMA. The S&Ps are up there at weekly plus three. The QQQ, the one and only. Samuchin, that weekly plus three. Amazon, all the way up there at weekly plus three. NVIDIA trades a cool 70 bucks. A casual 70 bucks above that weekly plus three. And Meta also trades above that extension. So in terms of sustainability, it's kind of tough to think the market's going to explode and run for another one, two, three, four weeks when we're already up here at that weekly 3 ATR. Doesn't mean we have to pull back. Doesn't mean we can't keep pushing higher. Probabilities-wise, we're a little bit closer to the end of the move than the very beginning. The other issue I'm seeing here Negative divergences on your lower time frames. So a really good example here. The hourly chart for the S&P futures. And I think you want to keep an eye here on the hourly squeeze into tomorrow. That hourly squeeze may or may not be a big deal. But down here on the big three squeeze, we got our MACD line. Notice how momentum tops all the way back here. Down goes momentum. They break it under the zero line. Momentum goes negative. Meaning the bulls have pretty much got no gas in the tank. They ran out of gas, but meanwhile, the price just keeps going higher. Big push into 5,000. And then even today, they try a couple of times to break it above that 49.80. They're doing that on negative momentum. They're trying to push the market higher on declining momentum. That's not sustainable. That is definitely not sustainable when your weekly charts are up there at 3 to 3.5 ATR. So tomorrow, I think a really big deal here is going to be the hourly squeeze. And whether or not the hourly 21 breaks under the hourly 50. If that takes place, now you've got a pretty interesting combination where momentum broke. And now your structure is starting to break. Again, on an hourly chart, maybe not the biggest deal it's potentially a big deal because of those extensions. If we're on top of the daily 21, I'm probably not paying too much attention here to that divergence. Given the fact that we are 2, 3, 4, 5%, um, in some cases 15% above daily support, a negative divergence at a lower time frame, doesn't matter until it matters, when it matters, it can be a big deal. So again, these are just a few things to keep an eye on, right? What none of these things are, are an actionable signal. We don't get short because the market is overbought. That's a great way to blow your account. We never get short because the dollar is popping. We never get short because of a negative divergence. If all those things come together and turn into an actionable signal, then you can look for a short. The key, of course, is doing that with a really good risk award. So a good example would be, say, tonight or tomorrow. The hourly chart here for the uh, the hourly chart here for the futures prints a sell signal. Now you've got an actionable signal. Short it under the 21. 
Try to play it down to that downside target, 49.30-ish. I don't think doing that until you have a sell signal makes any sense. A good example of that would be the cash market. Now, for what it's worth, we will get the sell signal on the, the hourly on the futures before we get it on the cash. But whether it be a 5-minute, a 15-minute, a 30-minute, you've got to wait for that signal. Notice back here, everything looks pretty nasty. You gap down, big flush, under the 21, under the 50. At one point, the 21 actually crosses under the 50. Right, Big break in momentum. At no point do we ever print an hourly sell signal. And keep in mind, we haven't had an hourly sell signal since back here, and that didn't do too much. The only other time since October 30th we had an hourly sell signal was back here, and that did trigger a pullback to your daily 21. Point being, though, we can be at weekly 3 ATR, we can be at weekly 333 ATR. If you don't have an actionable signal, if the momentum, the structure, the moving average crosses, the stack DMAs, if everything can't come together to print a sell signal, things aren't lined up to trend lower in, uh, in a meaningful fashion. They'll break it down. They'll make it look scary. All they're doing is roping in some fresh shorts, and then they spank them and they squeeze them out. So into tomorrow... I think you want to watch the hourly squeeze here for the futures, and if that 21 EMA breaks under the 50, pretty good chance that might fire short. And hey, at that point, given the fact we got divergences, given the fact the dollar is shaping up, and more importantly, given the fact our weekly charts are, are really freaking extended, that might trigger a pullback. Vice versa, the S&Ps are only about 40 to 50, 60 bucks away from that big 5,000 target. We might be overbought. We might be getting divergences, but this might be the week where the bulls want to get the job done and pump the SPX into 5,000. If they're going to do that, they need both momentum and structure. They've got to line things up where they can trend it higher in a sustainable fashion. In plain English, if they can get hourly momentum back above zero, pretty good chance to squeeze Monster Fire to the upside. And at that point, guys, I think we're taking out the highs, and 5K, here we come. So watch your hourly squeeze, watch that 21 EMA, and most importantly, be mindful of your risk. We're in a really good market. All right, check out the, uh, the big three scoreboard here. All I'm talking about is the potential for a little bit of a pullback. I think at some point we're buying that pullback if we get one. All right, check out the, uh, the indices here. The monthly chart, 10 out of 10. The weekly chart, 10 out of 10. The daily charts for the S&Ps and the QQQ, 10 out of 10. All right, momentum, structure, everything as bullish as possible. Four hour looking good, one hour looking good, 30 minute looking good. If we're lucky enough to get a pullback, you probably want to buy that. All right, the worst thing you can do is put yourself in a position where your bull market pulls back to a buy zone. And you're not in a position to take advantage of it because you kept getting long, you kept pushing the envelope, and you're not being mindful of your risk. I'm not saying get short. I'm not saying stop getting long. Get long in a fashion where the market can't hurt you. If you wake up tomorrow and you put 10% of your account into QQQ, and then Wednesday morning things finally pull back, guess what? That pullback... Although it might be into a bullish daily chart, it's probably going to hurt big time. That 10% position size coming against you, that bad boy's going to sting. Now you're getting, uh, you're getting all emotional. You're taking on all kinds of damage. You're locking yourself in your bedroom. You're not in a position to buy the dip. When our monthly, weekly, and daily charts are a perfect 10 out of 10, bigger picture, that's the game. We can look for shorts, we can look for a couple of cute trades to try to play it lower. The bigger trades are going to be in, in, a, in alignment with your bigger time frames. For now, that all remains bullish. So be mindful of your risk. If you are getting long, I think you want to do that with small size. And if tomorrow that 21 EMA breaks under the 50 on the hourly chart for the futures, look for that squeeze to break short and things could get interesting. 
But all right, y'all. Again, to be clear, not saying get short. Because the market's extended, I'm not saying get short because the dollar's popping. I'm not saying get short because we got divergences. If all those things come together in a form of a sell signal, then you may look for a short. Otherwise, be careful, and I'll talk to you soon. Adios.